I am talking today to Dennis Prager. Dennis has expressed very clearly that he does not find God lovable. And I've, I, I marvel at that, but I know people have their own perspectives. It's not necessarily there's a Gentile perspective, there's a Jewish, but, but it is, there's certain characteristics of every perspective and he's a Jewish man. And he studies the scriptures and he teaches the scriptures. But I wanted to just, just help you, Dennis, if you're out there, if you could check this out and just consider what I'm saying so that maybe you might perchance uh, throw a little love God's way. Because I know that you're a reasonable person. If you actually hear something that's reasonable, you'll consider it. I've heard you say that. I've heard you in certain instances. I don't know which ones, but I've heard you where you, you listen to somebody. So, this is what I offer for you to consider regarding God and his lovableness. As far as I understand, you and Judaism does purport that there once was nothing, that Genesis 1 is accurate. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So there once was nothing save God himself. There was something that was beyond what we know as somethingness. There had to be something like that. We call him God, call it God, the creator, because things don't create themselves. So this is an immaterial being, a timeless and spaceless being. So there was nothing. And we just tend to move right into Genesis 1, 2 and on and on. But just think about that. Once there was nothing, we can't really imagine that, but you can't to a certain extent. You can, you know, if you're there thinking about nothing, obviously there's something because there's you thinking about it. But once there was nothing, there was nothing. There wasn't even time for things to travel to through or space for them to sit in. And there's this mind, the mind of the creator. This creator caused there to be the beginning time space where there there was no space you don't put something in a place before you have a place to put it in and then the earth so that in itself what i ask you to consider dennis or anyone else there out there that doesn't think god is very lovable is that that is a tremendous act of love it's not just merely an act of creativity which it obviously is but it is an amazing colossal act of love it's love beyond anything we can imagine because it doesn't just look at you and say Dennis I love you it says hey I think I'm gonna make Dennis be before that it said I'm gonna create a world for Dennis to live in and Mark to live in and everyone to live in even Hitler to live in so we can't understand that and I don't think we should presume that we can, but maybe consider that getting to understand it is an eternal process. It can begin right here in this life and it will go on forever beyond this life because none of us is the creator. None of us will fully understand the depths of that, but that, is one of the many, many things that makes my God lovable to me is knowing that there was a choice involved. He wasn't required to do it, whether it's on the broad scale of all creation or just this one little part of it, this one little speck of dust in this vast, vast creation. The mind of that creator said, Mark B, Dennis B, that's love, that is love. And it is beyond anything we can comprehend. So that might be a better perspective to consider it from rather than the ugliness of the world, which I presume is what you and other people look at it from. Maybe I presume wrong, but I have heard you speak about it a lot and it's never made a lot of sense to me, but I have a different perspective. I've considered yours, so I'm just asking you to consider this one, this God is an amazingly lovable God. And to say that he is love, well, what else can you call that? That's the source of all love, just to decide to say, 
time start, space be, earth exists, people be. That's beyond anything we can imagine. Just the opportunity and just to have that opportunity that you might know him. You might know the creator of the universe. That's why Christians who get it, which doesn't seem to me to be very many, are so overwhelmed by the notion that Jesus is our God, that he humbled himself and came down to our level for the specific purposes of, yes, saving us, but so much more in that, to personalize God, to personalize him, not to theologize him, not to Christianize him, Judaize him, but to personalize him. That's why he came, and that's why we love him, because we see how much he loves us. In Jesus' name.